After collecting 7,000 responses, these are the poll results for each class. Thank you to everyone who participated. Please check out the unboxing video where I open over 120 crates as promised. All classes. What's interesting to note from the polls is that the soldier likely has the most play time considering he has over 33% of soldier players over 100 hours, while the heavy has the least play time with 51.8% of all heavies in the 10 to 50 hour range. In order of the most play time from least to greatest, the order is heavy, scout, pyro, medic, demo man, sniper, engineer, spy, and soldier. Also, that 70% of all players play in Valve pubs, while an average of only 27% or so play on community servers, and that 3% do strictly competitive. The Medic has the largest amount of players in the competitive field at 5%, while NG's had the lowest amount at 1%, according to these polls. I also asked whether each class plays defensively, offensively, or mixed. The largest percentage to play offensively is the Scout with 61%, defensively is the Pyro with 33%, and the best mixed is Demoman and NG at a close 67 to 68, which is very surprising considering you think they'd be more defensive. Now on to the weapons! The three most favorite weapons in their slots are Scattergun, Force of Nature, Soda Popper, Pistol, Mad Milk, Winger, Sandman and a three-way tie for second with Holy Mackerel, Boston Basher, and Atomizer. Soldiers are Rocket Launcher, Original, Black Box, Gunboats, Conjurer, Shotgun, Escape Plan, Disciplinary Action, Market Gardener. Pyros are Flamethrower, Degreaser, Backburner, Shotgun, Flare Gun, Scorch Shot, Power Jack, Home Wrecker, and Back Scratcher. Demomans are Grenade Launcher, Iron Bomber, Loose Cannon, Sticky Bomb, Tide Turner, Splendid Screen, Bottle, Eyelander, Scotsman, Skull Cutter. Heavies are the Minigun, Tomislav and Natasha, Sandwich, The Locos and Family Business, Gloves of Running Urgently, Holiday Punch, and then the Eviction Notice. NGs are the Rescue Ranger, Shotgun, Frontier Justice, Pistol, Wrangler, then Short Circuit, and Jag, Wrench, and then Gunslinger. Medics are Crusader's Crossbow, Blood Soldier, then Overdose, Medigun, Quick Fix, then Kritzkrieg, Ubersaw, Amputator, and Vitasaw. Snipers are the Sniper Rifle, Huntsman, and then the Bizarre Bargain, Jurati, Cozy Camper, and then a three-way tie between the SMG, Darwin Shield, and Razorback. Finally, there's the Kukri, Bushwaka, and Tribalman's Shiv. Finally, for Spy, there's the Ambassador, Letranger, and Revolver, Knife, Spy Sickle, and a tie between Big Earner and Kunai, Dead Ringer, Invizwatch, Cloak and Dagger, and finally the Sapper over the Red Tape, by a tremendous margin. The Team Fortress 2 community believe that these are the most overpowered weapons. Criticola, Direct Hit, Reserve Shooter, Scotsman Skull Cutter, and for Heavy, 60% of all Heavies believe that no weapons were overpowered. The most overpowered weapon for Heavy was the Sandwich at 12%. Similarly, the NG had 53% believe that no weapons were overpowered, with Gunslinger at 16%. Finally, we have Ubersaw, Darwin's Danger Shield, Dead Ringer, and Diamondback. The weapons that most needed a buff were Babyface's Blaster, Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol, Sun on a Stick, Righteous Bison, Liberty Launcher, Sharpened Volcano Fragment, Man Melter, Ulapool Caber, Cladum Moor, Warrior Spirit, Buffalo Steak Sandwich, Huo Long Heater, Brass Beast, Pomson 6000, Southern Hospitality, Overdose Amputator, Cleaner's Carbine, Sahanashin Shatana, Enforcer, and Red Tape Recorder. And finally, these are the least used weapons. Sun on a Stick, Righteous Bison, Pain Train, Sharpened Volcano Fragment, Man Melter, Clayton Moore, Warrior Spirit, Hue Along Heater, Pompson 6000, Southern Hospitality, Overdose, Searing Gun, Sahanshinshina, Cleaner's Carbine, Enforcer, and the Red Tape Recorder. Finally, for the rest of these sections, I'm going to talk about what I found the most interesting responses of these polls. I am not going to read out everything, just what I found out is interesting. I encourage you to go look at the PDFs below that I made for you so that you can observe the results for yourself. There was actually a population of 1% who didn't know about Force of Nature knockback jumping, and scouts call themselves pretty humble with only 9% believing they hit Sandman combos 80% of the time or better. 
Scouts also believe that at average they are 70% evasive in the air, and 60% of scouts want to team up with pyros to use the sun on a stick. For soldier, 53% of soldiers claim to know only necessary rocket jumps but stink at advanced maneuvers. The good news is only 3% of soldiers stick to the ground at all times. Surprisingly, soldiers claim to use banners more than switching between gunboats and shotgun. 10% of soldiers were unaware that the rocket comes out from where the model is, which means it's slightly slanted left or right depending on which side of the screen it's on. This also means that the original has the rocket come out directly from the middle. 4% of soldiers do not use a banner ever, and soldiers tend to keep quick fix medics with them when jumping, usually. Also, 50% of soldiers have never needed or practiced doing rollouts on 5CP maps. And finally, soldiers say their air shotting ability is around 40-60% to 60 accuracy. For pyros, unsurprisingly, 60% of pyros say they are fairly reliable air blasters, while 30% say that they usually miss. Only 1.5% of pyros do not know that air blasting teammates who are on fire heals you. Similarly, only 1% of Pyros didn't know about the Huntsman Arrow being a lightable object. Pyros also appear to not have a specific preference as it is a three-way tie for shotguns, flares, or whatever is needed in that situation. 14% of Pyros don't do any flare jumping, and 60% have no trouble with it. One-fourth of all Pyros are indifferent to the flog, with a respective one-third saying it's balanced and one-third saying it's overpowered. Only 11% of Pyros say that it's underpowered. 73% of Pyros do not specifically play Pybro and will only do so if it is required or asked of them. And for the last two, Pyros are 50-50 on whether or not W plus M1 is a fair description or meme against them, and overwhelmingly, 83% of Pyro players do not use Pyro Vision. For the Demo Man, 50% of Demo Men are unconfident that the Demo Knight is a valid playstyle, but only 4% call it an absolute mockery to the class. Sticky spamming for Demo Man seems to be a mixed bag. A little over half actively sticky spam, and a little under half passively lay traps and may spam if required. 10% of Demo Men are too drunk to sticky jump. Most Demo Men see themselves as 70% accurate when it comes to direct hit pills. However, they only see themselves as about 40% accurate on double donks. The community is split between spawn camping or not. A little over half of all demo men actively spawn camp, and a little under half don't do it at all or very rarely. Only 7.6 of them do not know that some stickies can remove sticky bombs, which is a good thing. And even though that they know that they can keep their heads if they switch weapons, 61% of demo men prefer to stay demo knight the entire time. 19% were unaware that you could steal heads from other classes, and 50% of demo men prefer to play demo man instead of spy for taking out sentries. As for the heavy, only 19% of heavies did not know about the minigun's ramp up damage, which is understandable, 66% of heavies always have a sandwich on them, and 70% of those heavies are very generous with their sandwiches. 21% that there isn't too much reliance on the gloves of running urgently, and 71% of heavies do not use the Hue Along Heater, even outside of payload. For the Engineer, the Dispenser beat the Sentry by 1% in how many NGs prioritize keeping it up. However, only 25% of NGs prioritize teleporters. 53% of NGs feel that the pistol helps them out the most. NGs only find spies troubling about 30% of the time. Demo men and soldiers take down sentries way more than spies, with 43, 35, and 15% respectively. When they were asked about which building they used the most, the level 1 sentry got 0 votes. For medic, only 12% of medics were unaware of ramp up healing, which is a good thing. Stock Uber tends to be used mostly for defensive, choke points, or point capture. Crits Krieg is used the most for pocketing and defense. Quick Fix is used mostly for rolling out and point capture. And the Vaccinator is not used by 60% of medics that answered this poll. Medics feel as though they are only protected about 40% of the time while in pubs. Their most favorite class to pocket is the Soldier. And when asked what their favorite objective is, keeping you alive, is their most important objective. For snipers, 75% of snipers, in a perfect scenario where they can kill either a medic or a heavy, guaranteed, choose the medic. 
at least 45% of snipers are capable of predicting invisible spies. Snipers tend not to be too bothered by spies, and depending on skill level, it's about a 30-50% to 50 on average. 50% of snipers agree that body shots are totally valid, but 33% of snipers agree that they're fine, so long as not only body shotting being the rule. And thankfully, only 3% of snipers actually go for headshots only. Overwhelmingly so, snipers say that the Huntsman is 50-50 in luck and skill. Snipers feel that they are 70% accurate with headshots with decent skill levels. And finally, scouts are undoubtedly the most frustrating class to headshot. Last but not least, spies. The majority of spies do not use friendly disguises. However, spies do use their revolvers way more often than we'd like to believe. Only 8.3% of spies do not shoot a sentry while it is being sapped, and there's no penalty like being discovered or killed for doing so. Thankfully, almost 60% of spies only go for trick stabs in desperate situations. Only one-fifth of spies are active trick stab tryhards. The most preferred disguises are Pyro and Scout. 71% of spies are not deterred by a Razorback. And in addition, 77% are not deterred by the HUO. 61% of spies believe that their most important job is crucial target takedown. I hope that you enjoyed these poll results. I'm thinking next time I'm going to be hosting a game show type deal with other YouTubers. And I'll have you guys answer the questions and then I'll ask them to see how well they know Team Fortress 2. If you'd be interested in that idea, please let me know and give me some example questions in the comments below. I may not use that exact question given that, you know, you might give it to one of your favorite YouTubers, but it will help me form kind of a basis of what you guys would be interested in. Otherwise, thank you all so much for your time. Thank you to everybody who answered these polls. It's a very interesting experience. Again, please look at all of the PDFs in the description below for all the information that is relevant to each class. You might find something that I didn't think was interesting, but is very interesting to you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please stay tuned because more will be coming your way. Bye bye.